Welcome back to this series of Light Reading video chats. It's Terry Sweeney, contributing editor with Light Reading. I'm joined now by Kaustub Das, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Cisco's Cloud and Compute Business. KD, thanks for joining us today. I'm delighted. Um, let's start by talking about the trends that are impacting customers in cloud today. What's, what's going on there? So Terry, there's actually a lot going on. Um, first of all, as it comes to the customers themselves, their applications are becoming more and more core to their business. And uh, those applications, the way they're built, the way they're operated is becoming more and more distributed. Um, the architecture of those applications are changing, You know, going from more um, virtual machine and container oriented to more microservices. And really it, it, it's forming an interconnected web of microservices that are delivering the experience. Um, now, while that's happening on the application space, the customers that Cisco um, directly interfaces with the operations teams, the IT teams um, at, our, at our customers, um, they've got a unique challenge. They're, they're almost um, leading their companies as champions of the future, of, of, of DevOps, of application relevance, of cloud-first moves, of open source. They're leading that charge as champions of the future, but at the same time, they're, they can't walk away from their roles as kind of guardians of the present. Like they've got to have maintain continuity and enterprise grade reliability and all of those things. So while they have to um, maintain this delicate balance, they also have to keep track and really um, productize all of the innovation that's coming at us from open source, from public cloud, from vendors like Cisco and take all of that innovation and deliver enterprise enterprise grade resilient platforms, right? So it's it's not about the brilliant idea, it's about a robust solution. And that's that's what our customers are charged with. How do you take all of that innovation and deliver a robust and rich customer experience? Okay. Th thanks. That's that's actually really helpful context. Um, especially as we look at the challenges uh, customers face in managing these hybrid cloud environments. What's what's happening there? What 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 are the regular challenges that customers run up against there? Well, part of it is uh, they've got to they've got to navigate these trends, right? So they've got to go from their present uh, to this future world, and which means that they not only have to change and embrace all this new technology, they also change their operating model. Their operations have to be much more telemetry driven, much more automated, much more um, orchestration of all of these components is much more critical to delivering that experience. And, and that, that's a bridge they've got to travel. Um, they've got to also um, bridge multiple different teams that now need to work together. There's the application teams, there's the SRE teams, cloud ops teams, infrastructure operations teams, and at the end of the day, uh, developers as well. So that means you've got to have a common vocabulary. You've got to have rich automation. You've got to have a, in a, connection, in a interconnection between these. And at the end of the day, you've got to have simplicity because that, you know, all of this, all of this complexity <laughs> gets, uh, gets overwhelming. You've got to drive that simplicity. That's, that's also helpful context. Um, <clears throat> You, you alluded to the fact that Cisco is a, a strategic partner um, helping businesses navigate uh, this hybrid cloud world. Talk a bit about the substance of that. How does, how does, how does Cisco show up as a, a partner to hybrid cloud customers? <clears throat> yeah, I think first of all, we, um, we meet the customers where they are in, in, in their current context. That may be, that may be one in which they have a, a lot of contemporary applications and infrastructure that they need, they're trying to modernize, or it may be where they are, have splintered their teams into, into teams that are managing the future, being much more cloud-first. Um, cloud 
um, and and the teams that are managing the the contemporary uh, mech, and and we really meet them where they are. We provide that bridge to help them navigate this trend. Um, our products uh, are built to to allow for this evolutionary transition. This is not this this is not something you can you know rip and replace. You at the end of the day. Um, your teams are what makes our customers' teams are what makes this magic happens, and it's the same team. Um, whether you 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 know you, whether you're using um, data centers that you own, that you rent, uh, edge locations that you operate, public cloud infrastructure that you rent, um, it's it's the it's the team, it's the operations team, it's the IT ops, it's cloud ops team, and it's important for them to have a common operating model. So one of the things Cisco is doing is delivering that common operating model uh, in a cloud neutral fashion, in a multi-cloud fashion, in a hybrid cloud fashion, uh, but also in a fashion that has uh, much more automation, much more telemetry driven, much more intelligence driven uh, automation. And so that's that's what we're doing um, with, with our customers, uh, really, really meeting them where they are and helping them navigate to the future. Talk a little bit about the term observ observability. Let me start that again. Talk a little bit about the term observability and why it's important in a cloud-first world. Yeah, yes, super. It's, it's good, con good context to look at. Um, observability. Observability is, is a dynamic understanding of the entire technology stack, st stack that's delivering a certain and customer experience. Um, and so it, it may be helpful to look at this kind of, kind of in a from to, right? So um, we're trying to go from, from siloed monitoring. We used to use the term monitoring, siloed monitoring of individual infrastructure comp components uh, in the individual application components and, and move to a multi-domain kind of uh, multi-domain visibility and observability of the entire stack. Um, the persona, who are interacting with this are changing as well. Uh, we're going from a, a much more passive monitoring to a much more active understanding of what's going on. It's not about uh, it's not about kind of monitoring. It's about actively, dynamically understanding everything that's going on. And and that dynamicism is the third piece, which is uh, the the goal is not to maintain systems that are relatively static, which used to be the past. The goal is to say every piece of this infrastructure, every code, every microservice, every infrastructure component is changing, it's morphing, it's evolving. And how do you, in this dynamic, um, in this highly dynamic and interconnected world, how do you, how do you deliver that, that experience that the customer, uh, that the end customer uh, it needs to experience? And that is, that is, the, that is observability. Um, it's really, you know, it's going from I monitor you uh, which used to be the past to a to a hey, every component make yourself observable so that we can then use the power of AI, use the power of ML, use the power of other techniques to to make sure we reduce any impact to user experience, a rapid remediation of user experience impact. Um, and 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 you asked a good question, Terry, which is. How is this much more relevant in in today's world? And it is because we've we've, we've gone through this application architecture evolution where we have a much more splintered, in some ways, application across microservices across locations where these where these microservices run. Whether it's um, um, public cloud, it's core data centers that you own, it's edge locations, and so it's a much more distributed uh, world for us. And the interactions between these pieces are much more complex. So every every piece is moving. There are many more pieces, and that's what makes observability critical today. Katie, how are Cisco's recent innovations that are powering the future of hybrid cloud um, also benefiting customers? Tell us a bit about that. So very recently, we, we talked about a number of innovations. Also earlier this year, we talked about a number of innovations and they I think they land in a few different areas. One is a suite of services to enable this future world that we just talked about for the last few minutes. A suite of services that are really anchored um, on a platform we call Intersight. Um, Intersight is the world's simplest 
hybrid cloud platform. And the, and the suite of services that we've been announcing are around several different vectors. They're around automation. Um, we announced a very unique partnership with Oshikorp Terraform uh, on that front to drive a much more infrastructure as code uh, automation, uh, a new operating model. Uh, but also we have uh, automation techniques that are much more contemporary, whether it's through other tooling, such as <clears throat> such as more predefined workflows uh, and so forth. We have um, uh, a thread around observability and a full stack observability solution all the way from the application into the infrastructure, all the way from public cloud to core to edge. Um, and then we have a set of innovations around cloud native uh, development. So um, certainly uh, around containers with the InterSight Kubernetes service, uh, which is a container as a service platform talked about earlier, and or um, about other other kind of uh, extensions to that platform, which we talked about very recently. The Service Mesh Manager is a great example of that, uh, which allows for IT and cloud operating teams to visualize Istio in a much more um, much more friendly manner to operations. Um, again, bridging that divide between developers and operators. Um, the, the other piece that we've uh, talked about in our portfolio is platforms to land that private cloud on, um, whether it is the most innovative private cloud platform, such as the X series that really blurs the lines between uh, different kinds of infrastructure that you had to make a choice between in the past. Um, but more importantly, it really enables that private cloud to be SaaS assembled from the cloud. We are really assembling your servers, your uh, networks, your storage from the cloud. And that's key, whether it's part of the X series or what we announced with the ICE or what we announced across our entire networking portfolio uh, with the innovation, the Nexus and what we're doing with the public cloud. So. That's how these two pieces are coming together is um, our portfolio is starting to meet these customers, meet our customers uh, and help them navigate, navigate to this new world. Fair enough. Um, Katie, one last question for you. What differentiates Cisco in this hybrid cloud environment? Yeah, gr great question. I, I talked about the stance in the portfolio, or certainly those are parts of elements of that, but I think more importantly, um, you need a partner that has the full suite uh, of, of portfolio. You need a partner that has the ability to work at the application layer, which we certainly do with our assets and observability and app dynamics, uh, the ability to work on the infrastructure and cloud operations layer, which we have with all of the assets within InnerSight um, and uh, other pieces and integration that we talked about, um, and certainly the assets in the in the networking and connectivity layer. I think delivering their application experience requires all of these pieces to come together, and only a company, only a partner that has the ability to not only deliver all these pieces, but deliver all of these in a much more integrated fashion is, is I think, important. Um, the other piece is one, one about um, stands right. We've had a we've we've had a cloud neutral stance, a hybrid cloud, multi cloud stance. I think it's important for our customers, and every single customer I speak with is uh, is is down that path of a of a hybrid cloud, uh, multi cloud journey. So having the cloud neutral, cloud neutral tooling, cloud neutral services is super important. And and finally, it's uh, it's around um, it's around a little bit of timing and innovation. I'm super proud of everything the team has done. I think the innovation we are putting forward is is really really exciting, and the timing of that innovation is right for what the customers need right now. Well, some great perspectives on buying, building, and managing hybrid cloud networks. KD, thanks for joining us today. Terry, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. We've been talking with Kausto Daus of Cisco. This has been Terry Sweeney with Light Reading. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time.